All right, today we're going to be building a basic jQuery slider, an image slider. Now, there's a lot of great jQuery plugins out for, there for this. Flex Slider, Royal Slider, all sorts of good ones. They have more features than we're going to be able to build in a couple minutes, uh, but we're learning jQuery, so this is a great example. Let's get into it. Um, I have a slider here. Let me show you the HTML behind it. I have a wrapper div with the ID of slider, and then I have UL class slides, and then I have a bunch of LIs that all have a class of slide. Um, each one of these has just an image that I've put in there. Slider 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I finished it with my first one as well. They're going to be sliding to the left, and I want the first one to be able to slide onto the screen at the very end. We'll see what that means in a minute. So here's the CSS driving it. The slider wrapper has a width of 720, and any overflow is hidden. And then all the slides are going left to right all the way out. So the slides UL has a width of 6,000 pixels, um, and then all the slides float left. So basically what you're seeing here, as I can show you, is if I were to make the margin left, now you get 100 pixels, there you go. So as the UL, the, uh, the UL slides to the left with a, le a negative margin, it's going to move there until we run out of slides. And so basically all our JavaScript needs to do is move this UL back and forth. Um, so that's the basics. Oh yeah, and then when it gets to the end here, let me go back up here. When it gets to the end, we need to somehow know that we are on the last slide, and then boom, go to margin zero. Uh, and the user won't even notice it because it's the exact same slide. So we need to go back to margin zero when we hit the last slide. So let's get into the code. Uh, one piece of code you'll need to know in JavaScript that if you don't know how to do it yet is set interval. Set interval takes two things. It takes a function and then it takes a time frame, like let's say a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. And every thousand milliseconds, it will fire this function. So as an example, I can do this. I can go every thousand milliseconds, we're going to log the date, new date. There you go. And so you'll notice here in the console, it's going to log the new date going up one second every time. Another thing you can do with set interval is you can save its value, my interval equals that interval. So now if I save that, it's going to start over again. Um, and now I can go clear interval, my interval. Give it the one you want to clear, and it stops it. So that's kind of, we don't want it to automatically run forever. We want to have the ability to start it and stop it. So we're going to save our interval. And then we need to use jQuery to animate this slider. And how you do that is you do, I'll show you over here. You do jQuery selector dot animate. And then you're going to give it an object, which is all the CSS properties and what you want to animate them to. You can animate more than one thing at a time. But in our case, we're just doing margin left. Uh, a time frame again, like how many milliseconds, and then a callback. Uh, which is if you want it to do something after the animation is complete. The callback function will be there. So we can just go slider slides, animate, margin left, to let's make it negative 720. And then I'll give it, let's do that over the course of one second. There you go. So now it just went to my second slide. I can also do negative, if I make it a string, I can go negative equals 720, and it's not going to go to negative 720, it's going to keep minusing 720 every time I run that. So now it's going to keep minusing 720, keep minusing 720, um, or I can just actually go to minus 720, which is slide number two, if that made sense. So let's go ahead and build out this uh, thing here. We're going to start by wrapping it in a jQuery document ready function, which is what we always do. And I also always like to start off with comments to set the stage for what I'm going to be building. Set interval is what I'm going to build here. And in that interval, I'm going to animate margin left. And then I'm also going to, if it's last, slide, go to position one, which is zero pixels. Um, and then I also want to add another feature. I want to listen for mouse enter and pause. So if you hover over the slider, I want it to pause. And, you know, while I'm looking at that slide. And then resume on mouse leave. 
So when I leave, I want it to start sliding again. So that's basically what my slider is going to be. Let's start building this out. Set interval. And let's make it run every three seconds. And every three seconds, I'm going to go slider. Slider slides dot animate. Just what I showed you before. Margin left is going to go negative seven. Nope, negative equals 720 pixels. Because I don't just want to go to negative 720 pixels. I want to keep subtracting 720 every time. And let's slide for about one second when we do that. There we go. Let's actually save, refresh. And now we should be sliding every three seconds. Yeah, over the course of a second. Feels good, feels good. But this is just going to keep going forever. Once we get to slide seven, it doesn't know you're there. It just keeps sliding. So now we need to get a little bit smarter. If it's the last slide, go to position one. Uh, one thing I'm going to do here is... I'm going to start, I don't like that all these configuration options are kind of scattered throughout the code. That's kind of a bad idea. So I'm going to start moving things up here. I'm going to go width equals 720, which is the width of our slides, which is set in the CSS. It's 720. The, the slides are all 720. Um, I'm going to go over animation speed equals 1,000. And then ver pause equals 3,000. So now I'm going to make this pause. There we go. Animation speed. And you, I will just go negative 720 plus width. So that basically is the same as saying negative equals 720, except for now I'm just storing my 720 up here. So if, if at any point in time I want to change the configuration, it's all in one place. You'll notice the colors are starting to look a little different now. All my yellows are up here. Um, and there's not very many yellows down here. That's a good sign. That means all my configuration, all the things of the same type tend to be in the same place. Not all code ends up looking this way, but this is definitely a good sign. Um, another thing I want to do too, uh, save configuration, is I want to do what's called caching the DOM. I think I've covered this in some other videos. Uh, but I don't want to have to look for slider slides every time. I want to be able to look for it once and then just reference it every time. So I'm actually going to go ver slider. There we go. So I searched the DOM and I found my slider. I'm using the dollar sign here so I know it's a jQuery object. Um, you can call it just slider, um, but I want to know that that's not a string or something. I want to remember that that's a jQuery search. So there we go. Slider equals that, and now I can reference it later on. So now every single time the interval fires, I don't have to look for my slider. Uh, except for I'm not actually animating the slider. I'm animating the slide container. So let's get that. Slide container equals. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go slider dot find slides so I'm going to I've already searched all my web page document and I found this guy and I've kept a track of it and now I just want to find a guy inside of it so I'm going to find slides inside that's a very fast operation um, so now once again you'll noticing I've only done my jQuery selector once so this is going to be a very fast and high performance piece of code um, and then I want to go let's go slides as well equals um, slide container. Oh, yeah, that's right. Find slide. So that's going to be the whole list of my slide elements. So this is actually slide container. Did I not spell that right? Nope, I didn't. Container. There you go. I'm just going to copy paste that. It's annoying to type that while I'm talking. Okay, so there we go. So just again to cover what I did here is I only searched my whole HTML web page once right there. Um, and from there on, I'm looking inside that piece that I found to find some specific things I will reference later. So now every time it has to do the animation, it just goes boom. I already know where that is. I'm going to find it and animate it. It's a much faster piece of code. So now what I need to do is I need to start checking afterwards to see if I'm on my if I'm on the last slide or not. Um, what I will do here is I'm going to add a callback. Remember I said the third thing you can pass to animate is a callback. So once the animation is done, I want to check if I'm on the last slide. If I am on the last slide, I go to the first slide. 
So if, um, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to, let's do this. Let's go plus plus or current slide. Wait, I didn't save current slide here. Current slide equals one. I always want to start on slide one. So I'm going to go current slide plus plus. So I'm boosting that up. So the first time it's going to turn it to two, then three, then four. Every time I plus plus that, it's just going to go up one number. If current slide it equals slides dot length. So if current slide is, if we're on the last one, current slide will be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then if that is the same as my length, uh, which is the count. So if I can show you that. There's slide. If I do slide dot length then it's going to be six. There are six slide elements on my page. So if current slide is the same as slide length, then we want to make current slide equals one. We want to make sure that goes back to one. And then we're going to go slide container, um, just CSS. We're not going to animate this time. We want it to happen immediately, and we want it to happen behind the scenes. We want to make the margin left zero. Okay, so every time we animate, we bump up our number of our current slide. If it now equals our slide's length, uh, then we're going to go back to number one. That should work. Let's check it out. And I'm going to set our pause to one second, so this should happen faster. Uh-oh, slide contain conat here is not fine. Right, because I can't spell. There we go, slide container. Slide conat here is still not found. What the heck? Cannot type. Yep. There we go. All right, so here we go. We're sliding through every one second, and then we should know here. Nice. Okay, so once we got to the last one, we realized that we were on the last one, and we set this back to one, and then we went to margin left zero. Great. And that's going to get really annoying for it to move that fast. So now all we have to do is add this. We've taken these three out. Check, check, check. Let's just do that mouse enter in that pause part, and we're done with our slider. Uh, this is actually going to be a little trickier than we think, so let's go here, slide container. Actually, we're just going to do slider. Slider dot on, mouse enter. We're going to pause slider. And then dot on, mouse leave. We're going to resume slider or start slider. Okay, now the thing is, is we actually don't have a way of pausing our slider right now, so what we need to do is, let's actually make an interval. This will be our thing that we start and stop, and let's make a function for start slider and a function for stop slider. So now I'm going to put this set interval within my start slider function. Interval equals set interval. Okay, so now I'll, whenever I click start slider, it's going to store my interval in this guy. Um, I had to define this outside of my function because if I did var interval in here instead, I can't access that interval anywhere outside of the function. It's kind of within what's called the scope. Interval only exists within this function, so now I can't talk to it from outside. So what I had to do is I had to define interval here. And now I can reference interval is talking to that guy. So I can start slider and then function stop slider is easy. Stop slider is just going to clear the interval. And that's why I had to define interval outside of my function, because I have to be able to clear it. Um, and I can show you in a little bit why that wouldn't work the other way. So now we go, I have my, oh, I called it pause slider, didn't it? Well, we're going to call this pause slider then. I'll just call it stop. So now when I mouse enter over slider, it's going to stop it. And when I mouse leave, it's going to start it. Um, and guess what? When I hit, when I stop it and it refreshes, uh, when I save it and it refreshes, nothing happens because start slider is never being called. So I need to, at the very end of all things, just start my slider. Now it should work. 
Great. So it's sliding. Excellent. Now if I hover, it should stop sliding. Of course, I'll probably need to click on this. Okay, if I hover, there you go. It stopped. And now if I mouse leave, of course, I just called it Mo's leave. Okay, let's try this again. It's paused. Let's pause it. Make sure it's paused. It is paused. Let's hover. And it should start up again. Excellent. So let's just once again cover what we did to make sure it's not super confusing. Um, and I'm going to just, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to just comment you out so that thing doesn't slide all day. All right. So we made a function start slider, stop slider. So that way we could say on mouse enter, we're going to stop slider. On mouse leave, we're going to start slider. Um, and then we define this interval thing here. Let me go, um, just for your learning about JavaScript, if we did interval here, we just made interval a new variable, but it's only going to stay within my function. So stop slider will not work, because when I hit clear interval, it's not going to know where to find interval. A function only has access to the variables inside of it and the variables up one level, which are all these guys. It's not going to have ac it's not going to have access to variables defined inside of another function. Here, let me show you this in operation right here. So I'm going to save and I'm going to hover. Interval is not defined, it says, because it doesn't know what to do. So when I try to stop the slider, it can't find interval. Um, and so there's your problem. So we're just going to go var interval. We're just going to define it and not give it any kind of value whatsoever. And now everybody else can talk to it. We can put values into it and we can mess with the values that are there. So there you go. That's how to build a jQuery slider. Um, hope it made sense. Feel free to watch it again. Drop me some comments if there are things that don't make sense. Have yourself a great day.